Welcome to 21st Century Competencies in Action, Planning Instruction for 21st Century Learners. In this video series, you'll see examples of learning activities facilitated by teachers in Washoe County School District that help our students develop the competencies they will need to be college and career ready in the 21st century and demonstrate mastery of the content and skills articulated in the Nevada Academic Content Standards. Based on a three-year global research study into innovative teaching and learning conducted by Microsoft Partners in Learning, Washoe County School District has adopted a framework that includes six dimensions of 21st century learning, collaboration, knowledge construction, real-world problem solving and innovation, the use of technology for learning, self-regulation, and skilled communication. Hello members of City Council, I'm Peyton Wilson and this is my partner Brooke Selassie and we are working together to save the bees. Our essential question states, how can we rethink Reno to make great things happen? We have gave this some thought and we would love to share a new and improved idea. When it came to the data and the curriculum, uh, we did several things. Um, the teacher and I, Mr. Odis, our GT support teacher, we came up with a pre-assessment and a post-assessment regarding our PBL. What were the walkaways that we wanted? We wanted them to know the district's areas in Reno. We wanted them to know their audience, how to write a persuasive proposal, um, how to problem solve, and how to collaborate. So when we were thinking about a pre-assessment and a post-assessment, we wanted to be able to show the growth just in the civic social studies components and community components. But there was also some other uh, curriculum that I was able to add into our project. Um, being that I also have my master's in STEM, I was able to incorporate math, the geometry unit. This video focuses on the 21st century learning dimension of knowledge construction. Students are constructing knowledge when they apply critical thinking to go beyond merely reproducing knowledge by generating ideas and understandings that are new to them. The Knowledge Construction Elevator identifies four 21st century competencies. As you watch the video, be on the lookout for examples of students constructing knowledge by generating ideas and understandings that are new to them, spending most of their time and effort constructing knowledge, applying knowledge they have constructed in a new or substantially different context, and working together in an interdisciplinary setting with content from two or more academic disciplines. I was able to incorporate math, the geometry unit, and the students had to design a city based on ge geometric features and districts, and they had to know what public works was, the entertainment center, and they had to lay out a, pretty much they were civic engineers, lay out a city map, not only necessarily Reno, but any city, create their own city, and then I was assessing them on geometry standards when they were building their prisms, where they were building their nets, and also when they were labeling their buildings and their parallel streets. So geometry was incorporated in the beginning when I did um, a mini STEM project on Geometro City. And then from there, I wanted to see if it would transfer what they did in math into the Reno, can we rethink Reno to make, make a better place project. And they were, they were able to understand that why is it that the Moana pool area was um, located where it was and why is it that it was torn down and what is it that we need there based off of the neighborhood and see what would make the best fit. So when I had my students working on the math, Ge Geometro City, they were able to transfer that knowledge into real life problem solving and realize what's the functions of a city and then how do civic engineers design around that. This video focuses on the 21st century learning dimension of real-world problem solving and innovation. Students are using problem solving when they define problems and develop solutions to these problems that are new to them. Students are also problem solving when they complete a task that no one has instructed them how to do or design a complex product that meets a set of requirements. The real-world problem solving and innovation elevator identifies three 21st century competencies. As you watch the video, be on the lookout for examples of students solving problems as the primary purpose of an activity, 
working on solutions to problems that actually exist in the real world, and putting their work to use in the real world through the process of innovation, that is, the creation of products, methods, or ideas that are new to the students and have potential value to others beyond the classroom setting. This year was my first year that I can honestly say we did a PBL. And the experience and the rewards are so mind-blowing that I couldn't plan for what happened with my students and their learning and how empowered they feel. None of our previous teachers would have ever said, hey, let's help the community. All of our previous teachers are like, what would you do if you were to help the community? So, rather than actually try. Yeah, more of a what if than a here's your issue, you're going to actually do it, right? Yeah, this definitely is better for students. That This is definitely better for students than just standard teaching methods. Because it's real world. Yes, because it's real world. Yeah. Like, they teach you math. Things. Why don't we put this to the, te to the test and actually do it to your, to your life? Yeah. I have students that spoke in front of city council, both in public meeting and both informally. They feel empowered, they have a voice, and there's nothing I could have really done in a textbook to show them that same passion, that same uh, feeling they had with their own idea. Having this broad question and where you have multiple responses, I couldn't prepare anything for them. I had to wait for them to see what they were going to bring me and then plan. And for me, that's giving them what they need uh, because they're all at different levels and they're all at, uh, they have different feelings about how things should work. So I was able to really get to know the students, both personally, both academically, and I was able to facilitate what they needed at that time. This video focuses on the 21st century learning dimension of self-regulation. Students are regulating themselves when they are engaged in long-term activities in which they have some control over the planning of their work and the process of carrying out the work, and have the opportunity to improve their work over multiple iterations. The self-regulation elevator identifies three 21st century competencies. As you watch the video, be on the lookout for examples of students engaging in long-term activities where students have clear learning goals and success criteria, planning and carrying out their own work with the learning goals and success criteria in mind and monitoring their progress, and having the opportunity to obtain meaningful feedback that allows them to revise, adjust, and improve their work prior to submitting or finalizing it. Well, I had to think about it in chunks. So I knew that the whole presentation was a proposal persuasive type thing. So um, I showed in the video Austin's Butterfly, where it shows the progression of a student that takes critiques from, other, uh, from their peers. And through the critiques, the student was able to improve each time they were doing um, the drawing. In our case, it wasn't a drawing. It was a presentation. So we started very slow. We said just the introduction. I, we called it the elevator pitch. You have one minute. How are you going to wow them? How are you going to capture your audience? practice that. Uh, they had one minute just to focus on that. Then they would hear the critiques. They would hear from the body language to the speech to the rhythm. And then they would go back and they would revise and edit and fine tune it. Then it would happen again. They would present again their elevator pitch again, their introduction. And then from there it just kept on building based off of the critiques of their peers and also my just fine-tuning what is it that we're working on right now. Hello members of City Council, I'm Peyton Wilson and this is my partner Brooke Selassie. You may be thinking, how, how can, can we rethink Reno to make great things happen? We have been researching about a certain hotel in New York City called the Waldorf Astoria Hotel. This hotel has created urban rooftop gardens on the top of the buildings dedicated to safe peace. Not only do the guests enjoy the garden, but the chefs collect honey to eat at the restaurants. Also, a hotel in Minneapolis called the Hyatt Regency Hotel has had bees check in. Um, the, this means that the guests at the hotel can buy local honey from the gift shop. Therefore, to save the bees, we would like to make rooftop gardens and apiaries on the highest buildings in Reno. This way we support the local bee population. The bees will make honey in the apiaries and the businesses can use it or sell it locally. 
We are in progress of contacting the Northern Nevada Beekeeping Association. City Council, would you like to be the first to try this because we, we need, need your, your help, help to make, make our business, business possible. We will give you 45% of our company only if you can partner with new developers in Washoe County School to check to solve our overcrowding issues in our school. Thank, Thank you. you. Questions? This video focuses on the 21st century learning dimension of collaboration. When students are collaborating, they are working together in pairs or groups to discuss an issue, solve a problem, or create a product. The Collaboration Elevator identifies four 21st century competencies. As you watch the video, be on the lookout for examples of students working together in pairs or groups, sharing responsibility to develop a product of learning, making important decisions together about the content, process, or product of their learning, and working interdependently, where they must depend on each other to create a product or learning outcome. I knew that I had to incorporate SEL into the project. I already knew how much stress it would be for the students and how collaborating and coming to a compromise was going to take a toll on them, especially if they became passionate about their project, their problem solution. They, they were the ones that created their solution to their problem, so they feel passionate about that. So with that comes negotiation with able, being able to work with a group. And work together. That is really challenging to do, especially when you come up with different ideas and you have to merge and create a compromise. To do that one, and there's some more sugar over here. Oh, I like that Mario one. Yeah. Um, or this one. Um, our, like, <laughs> our project, it was, um, we spent a lot of time on it, which means we spent a lot of time um, with each other, and that's what I love, because we, um, it was leadership, um, teamwork, mostly teamwork, and teamwork, you know, it's like one of the best things that you can have in, in life um, because without teamwork there wouldn't be anything like your jobs there's teamwork and um, in school there's teamwork you need teamwork for an everyday life. Yeah like we got really mad at each other we yelled at each other sometimes but then at the very end we were like happy to be with each other. Maybe we can do it where we, where we can put it to the head. This video focuses on the 21st century learning dimension of skilled communication. Students are communicating skillfully when they are representing connected ideas rather than single simple thoughts, and when they are using more than one mode or tool to create and communicate a coherent message. The Skilled Communication Elevator identifies three 21st century competencies. As you watch the video, be on the lookout for examples of students using extended communication where they represent a set of connected ideas rather than a single simple idea, or multimodal communication, where they use more than one mode or tool for communicating, providing supporting evidence by explaining their ideas using facts or examples, and adapting communication to meet the needs of a particular audience. Well, I think with students, especially with the language barriers, is they all are able and capable to meet your high expectations when it comes to language. How you scaffold it, that is the role of, my, of, of um, the teacher. I have to be sure that if I have them do a project, I have to think about the graphic organizers I am going to be implementing. I have to think about the practice before the final. I have to be able to make sure are they speaking, are they listening, are they writing. Um, writing is huge for language learners because most of the time they're able to focus on the speaking portion, but it's with the writing that it becomes more concrete for them and less abstract. And it gives them a go-to when they do not know what to do, or if they have a moment, we all have those moments, but especially language learners when they're switching, um, when they're code switching between languages, when they see it in writing, it becomes a more concrete for them. Now I hope that the, what they learned from PBL, that they can see a PBL everywhere that they look. I have um, students now thinking about their next PBL and what is it that they want to change and that we should talk about, you know, the water um, situation and the drought, or we should do one 
regarding the homeless or we should do one regarding the DMV, <laughs> you know, and the wait lines that now they're looking around and they're trying to be problem solvers. And I feel that was the message across. When you see something that thinks that is a problem, let's be part of the solution and not be part of the problem. So um, next year, I'll do another PBL. I have no idea on what. I think about my PBL backwards. I think about the audience first and the characteristics of the school and the class coming in. Um, so basically, I plan backwards. I have to think of the audience because I want their learning to go outside of the classroom. Once that's outside of the classroom, the learning becomes real to the students. And it's something that they would walk away with for the rest of their life knowing that how they can handle a problem and solve it and articulate that in front of an audience. This video focuses on the 21st century learning dimension of use of technology for learning. Students are using technology for learning when they use some form of computer technology to complete all or part of an activity and have control over this technology themselves. It's important to remember that the use of technology for learning is not about learning to use the technology but rather how students can use technology as a tool for learning and creating. The use of technology for learning elevator identifies four 21st century competencies. As you watch the video, be on the lookout for examples of students having opportunities to directly use and control technology during the activity, generating ideas and understandings that are new to them through the use of technology, being required to use technology to generate ideas and understandings, and using technology creatively to design a product that others can use. Computer and look at us. So, okay, so we actually have a city. Uh, okay. So, okay. So, let's go to their homepage and then let's find the government. Okay, I have So, what type of. So we should maybe think about who exactly we're directing this to, like the park and rec manager, right? So I'm kind of the teacher that's willing to take the risk and be kind of like, here's how I did it. Here's the pros and cons. Here is, um, his name is Mr. Odis that comes in from the GT teacher. Um, he, can't, he came in with his points, uh, what he can contribute, whether it was the skills with the communication or whether it was a proposal, the written piece, the rubrics. He helped me establish the rubrics. We actually worked together. I was, we were building our PBL unit from the start in the beginning of the year. So we both knew what the essential question was, what were our standards that we were covering. And then once the teachers all understood our mission, uh, then it just became a collaboration. It just started growing. Now that we have finished, we hope to take everything that we learned and share it with the rest of the staff. City Council, I am so thankful for this opportunity. I want you to have a voice in your own community, become an active citizen, and engage in public discourse and public conversation. Um, a little background to the members of the audience. Our students had a project, and that is basically a non-tradition pedagogy method of taking learning outside the classroom into the real world. All these students worked really hard to solve a problem in Reno. They had to bring different communities together. They had a campaign for what they think could be the best for our community, and not only our community, but sometimes global issues and international issues as well. So without further ado, I present Saving Lives by Saving Bees. Yay! I've been researching about ways to help bees in an urban community. We have stumbled upon a new movement that a hotel in New York City has started. The Waldorf Astoria Hotel has created urban rooftop gardens dedicated to saving bees. Not only do the guests enjoy the garden, but the chefs can use the honey to use at their restaurants. This idea has been all the buzz because now the Hyatt Regency in Minneapolis has bees on their building as well. In fact, we have contacted them and they were happy to share their results. The bee program has been sustainable for three years. And during prime season, the hive has around 30,000 bees per hive. 
The Hyatt allows a limited number of people out to the house, but as a standing policy, they are not open to the general public. The hives are more productive when they are alone. Therefore, to save the bees, we would like to make rooftop gardens and apiaries on the highest buildings in Reno. The buildings must be ten stories high because the apiary should be a thousand feet away from foot traffic. However, we have in, even entertained the idea of installing the first urban rooftop garden and apiaries on the top of City Hall. We hope you consider this idea as a way of supporting the bee population. The bees will make the honey in the apiaries, and businesses can use it or sell it locally. Imagine guests purchasing honey from the local gift shops of the hotels they stay at. Sounds good, right? Right. We can hire a beekeeper who will handle the bees, but in return, the beekeeper will take half the honey and do whatever they wish with it. We have contacted the Northern Nevada Beekeeping Association. They said that new apiaries would cost around $500. Saving the bees is an important initiative because they are dying from the overuse of fertilizers and pesticides. A personal account from a beekeeper mentioned that since 1976, he has never experienced a loss with his bees, like in recent years. For example, in the past two years, he has lost 67% of the bee colonies, and before, the average loss was 6%. We want action to help increase the bee population in Reno. At our last meeting, the question was asked what to do with the bees during the winter season. The Hyatt had a response to this. The bee boxes are wrapped in black cardboard to help insulate the hive, but remain on the rooftop throughout the whole winter. The bee population live off their own honey. Through constant movement of the bees in the hive, they can maintain an internal temperature of 72 degrees up to an outside air temperature of 20 degrees below zero. We, we would like your help to make our bees nest possible. As a side note, we have beekeepers and my Girl Scout troop is ready to serve. Einstein once said, if honeybees were to disappear from the face of the earth, mankind would be gone in four years. Also, one-third of the food supply relies on honeybees for pollination. This is one of the reasons why we want to save the bees. Thank you, Sharks, for listening to our presentation. We will give you 90% of saving lives by saving bees if you will consider partnering with us or finding a business partner in town that is willing to invest in our idea. We had no luck with Grand Sierra Resort, but we need to find a tall building. <laughs> Please consider investing in our project as we believe in Rena. <laughs> Great job. <laughs>